It's your boy Max here and welcome back to another video. I know this looks like it's going to be a vlog, but in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about the Boston Bruins and their 2022 NHL trade deadline. And more specifically, what I think they're going to do on actual deadline day. Guys, it's Max from the future editing this video. I reference Nick Paul on the Ottawa Senators a lot. Just ignore all of that. I don't feel like cutting out every time I say his name, but I do reference him a lot. He's been traded already to the Tampa Bay Lightning for Matthew Joseph and the fourth. So again, just ignore that and on to the rest of the video. Now, as of right now, the Bruins have only made one move, albeit it is a pretty big move. And if you've missed the video or if you haven't seen the video, I highly suggest you go on the channel and you look at the Hampus Lindholm trade. The Boston Bruins yet again make another trade with the Anaheim Ducks. They've done this at deadlines before. Uh, in previous years, they've acquired Andre Kasha and Nick Ritchie in separate deals with the Ducks. But they do another one here as they acquire defenseman Hampus Lindholm and Cody Curran who is just a 32-year-old AHL defenseman. Of course, Lindholm is the bigger piece in this deal. Turn the Burns sent a 2022 first-round pick, a 2023 second, and a 2024 second-round pick, as well as John Moore and Erho Vakanainen. So it was a pretty big package to get Hampus Lindholm. So... Does that leave any room for the Bruins to acquire any other players? And I'm here to tell you, I think they do. From the time you guys are seeing this video, at this time, it's about 7 p.m. Eastern when I'm recording this, and the Bruins have only made the Hampus Lynn home trade. So what is left for the Bruins, and what do, you, what do I think the Bruins need to acquire? Defensively, I think they're good. I did want them to add to some defensive help. Now, a lot of people wanted the left side, and they did get left side help with Hampus Lindholm, and he'll probably play on the first or second pairing. I kind of preferred a right-handed shot. I think there was more weakness there. Um, on the left side, the Bruins have McAvoy, now Lindholm, and then Riley and Forbert. So potentially Riley and or Forbert um, end up getting moved, or they play on their offside which is why I kind of wanted a right defenseman because Connor Clifton is on that right side. And I think he could have been the one to be a seventh defenseman in this scenario. Goaltending is not the issue for the Bruins. They're going to run with Jeremy Swayman and Lena Solmark heading into the postseason. And rightfully so, Jeremy Swayman is making a Calder race for himself. He's having excellent numbers. And over the past few starts for Lena Solmark, he has improved from earlier in the season. And I think he's starting to find his groove so whether it's a 1a 1b scenario which i think it is still right now i think they're still going to be able to complement each other pretty well that leaves you with some forward help now the Bruins have had some improvements on depth scoring over the past couple months or so whether that stays consistent who knows jake debrusque apparently still wants out of boston now i'm gonna say right now i think he stays a bruin after the deadline I don't see the Bruins actively looking to make a trade. I don't see the Bruins looking to ship him out. And the main reason for that, because a lot of people have been wondering, is because I think the Bruins want to compete for a cup. I think that is the goal. Signing Lampus, Hampus Lindholm, pardon me, for that eight-year contract at $6.5 million per, and trading away all those assets proves they still want to win and proves that they still want to give Bergeron the shot to win another Stanley Cup. So... Um, I don't think Jake DeBrusque, well, yes, his value is probably sky high with this market and you might be able to get a first round pick and a prospect. That doesn't really help the Burns right now because then you're out of a player who's been playing first line right wing time and getting good chemistry with Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. So I think DeBrusque does stay unless you find a guy who can do that job exactly and you're only trading DeBrusque because he wants out. That's literally the only reason you're trading him. There's the second line center spot, something that the Bruins have been lacking since David Krejci left the team um, in the offseason. Now, it has been announced that Krejci will not be returning as many Bruins fans had hoped. He announced he will be staying at least for this season in Czechia with his family. Now, whether he decides to come next year, who knows? He might decide to. Um, if he does, there are reports that he would only really want to play for the Bruins, nobody else, which does make sense because he's been with the Bruins his whole career. But... There's not really a market right now for second-line centers. There was Claude Giroux, who was just traded to the Florida Panthers, and there was Thomas Hurdle at some point, but he signed an eight-year extension to stay with the Sharks. Ask me, the Bruins don't need to really make a move. I don't see any of the available players that are on the board, considering the assets the Bruins have and would have to give up. I don't think there's any trades that really put you past Toronto Tampa or Florida. If you're asking me honestly, I really don't see a need to make any more trades. However, I do think they do make a trade. Before you ask, there's been talks about Andrew Kopp 
um, on the Winnipeg Jets, Max Domi on the Columbus Blue Jackets, and Nick Paul on the Ottawa Senators. All three of those guys are kind of middle six. Nick Paul is maybe more of a bottom six type player. And they're just players that you can kind of throw all around the lineup, which I think is something the Bruins need if they are going to go after a forward here. I think versatility is huge. Somebody who can potentially play at that second line center spot if Hallow starts to cool down. Someone who could play at that first line right wing spot if Jake DeBrus cools down or gets moved. And potentially that player is an Andrew Kopp. Now, I do think Kopp's price is going to be a little bit higher than a Max Domi or a Nick Paul. Um... But even the Nick Paul trade, you know, the Bruins made a trade with the Senators last year for Mike Riley for a third round pick. And um, there could be a, a possibility, you know, the Senators just traded a third round pick to get Travis Hamannick. So they might be wanting another pick back. The Bruins could send like a middle round pick, potentially a third and a fourth or something like that. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. But there could be a chance the Bruins could acquire a Nick Paul to play on those bottom minutes instead of a Thomas Nosek or a Curtis Lazar or something like that. However, I've been a huge fan of both of them, but it's just some more injury assurance because we all know injuries do happen in the playoffs as unfortunate as that is. Assets, the Bruins do not have a first round pick this year. They do have a first round pick next year, but it has been very clear that general manager Don Sweeney does not want to trade that first round pick and rightfully so. It looks like next year's draft class is going to be a lot deeper than this year. So you want to hopefully keep that for next year. And you also don't know if the Bruins are going to be a worse team next year. So keep next year's first round. You don't have a second for this year or next year. You have all your thirds, fourths, fifths, etc. So maybe that's a decision. You also have an additional third round pick from the Calgary Flames in the Dan Vladar deal. So that could be a move. I would be willing to bet that that gets traded, whether it's the Bruins third round or the Flames third round. Um, sorry, I had some geese, by the way. Um, one of those picks I say would be gone. The Bruins have an abundance of those. And so if you want to flip those and get a depth piece then do it the Bruins still have Fabian Lysel who I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 sure if you guys know I'm a huge fan of him but I'm 99% sure that he is like off limits um he's an untouchable and he should be Mason Lowry I would hope he's an untouchable but maybe for a really high caliber player he could be moved I doubt it Jack Stadnika he's there um again he's more of uh a higher prospect, but in the grand scheme of things, he's really not that high. Guys like Jack Ashan, who the Bruins seemingly prioritized over Erho Vakaninen. You have some other prospects in the system like Johnny Beecher, Jakob Lauko, etc. But the issue with the Bruins is the prospect pool is one of the worst in the NHL. According to The Athletic, they have the 27th or 28th ranked uh, prospect pool in the entire league and a lot of that is because they've traded away a lot of their picks to get these trade deadline rentals to get these bigger pieces to try to keep contending for cups and over the years they have they've made it to the finals in 2019 multiple second round appearances you guys know the drill max enough with the blabbering enough with the talking nonsense who do the boston bruins acquire on trade deadline day or maybe in the next few hours after this video is posted my luck it'll be right after this video is posted we'll trade for somebody and this whole video will be completely pointless i think the boston bruins acquire max domi i think he adds some gritness and toughness and i know it goes against about what i just said about nick paul or andrew cop but i think he's relatively cheap compared to andrew cop and you can kind of throw him anywhere in the lineup he can bring some toughness some physicality something the bruins aside from like Charlie McAvoy and Trent Frederick seemingly lack. And uh, I really wouldn't mind Max Domi. I've been a fan of his for a long time. I've wanted him on the Bruins for a long time. He's been in talks with the Bruins, like Bruins acquiring him for a long time. So who knows what that entails going the other way. But uh, I think that is one of the most likely scenarios um, to expect on deadline day. And I wouldn't necessarily be upset. Again, the biggest thing is return-wise. I'll show Jay Fresh's cards of both uh, Andrew Kopp, Max Domi, as well as Nick Paul. So you guys can take a look and maybe decide who you would rather. But also keep in mind the return the Burns would have to give up because that matters a whole hell of a lot as well. At the end of the day, this is just my thoughts, what I think is going to happen. And this is also going off of a lot of reports that I hear on Twitter and all, all across social media regarding what the Burns could potentially be getting. And sometimes Sweeney has just been like, you know what, actually, none of those players is who I want. I'm going to get someone completely no one thought about. And that could be who the, the Bruins acquire. But I do think another trade is coming. I do think the Bruins are 
planning something else, and I think it's Max Domi. Regardless, though, let me know who you think the Bruins are going to acquire uh, and for what. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the Hampus Lindholm trade if you haven't already told me um, your thoughts about it. And go check out the other video where I talk about the Lindholm trade. And I will be talking about every trade deadline acquisition or all the major ones at least on the Tuesday after the deadline just so I can have a day to recap and assess my thoughts and all that stuff. So expect that on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, but most likely Tuesday. Regardless though, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, leave a like, hit subscribe, and I'll... Uh, See y'all in the next one. Peace.